We welcome Zach Barry of OM Spirit for a very different kind of spring game preview because Ole Miss is not playing a normal spring game. They are playing the Grove Bowl games. And Zach, we're talking seven on seven. We're talking hot dog eating contest, skills competition. Oh, where, where, where do we even start with this thing? I mean, I think you got to start with you know, the Jaws, Joey Chestnut, he will be in attendance. Um, that will be the halftime, uh, you know, quote, halftime entertainment. Um, I actually just got through talking with him. He said he's not sure if he's just judging or if he's going to judge and eat. He said uh, he did tell me if the players are going too slow, he might just not be able to hold back and just will start eating. Yeah, yeah I'm, I got some plans. I can I can shuffle around. and. Uh, okay. And I was able, like, yeah, I'm coming down on Friday and gonna go to the game and hang out. And uh, they're, apparently they're gonna have a hot dog contest, hot dog yeah. eating contest. And I haven't, I haven't been told that they want me to eat, but uh, okay. I think I'm judging. But who knows? I might. Uh, it, it's torture for me to watch guys eat hot dog. If they're going slow, it, it, it's like torture. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to throw down a couple. Um, I feel like you have to pay them extra to eat, right? Is that is that how that works? You know, I. He said it, not me. He, he's a self-proclaimed fat boy, and he says he loves to eat. So he said that if 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 the if the itch, you know, if, if it's if it starts happening, he's going to eat. Um, but he is about to ramp up Nathan's hot dog eating contest uh, training, so maybe he'll uh, he'll hold back. <laughs> I love it. He's like an Olympic swimmer, and he has like a loading and a taper and all the all the other stuff. <laughs> You know, I, I figure he's a 16 time champ at hot dog eating, and then his world records are ridiculous. Uh, the, the CV is long and impressive, but <laughs> I figured he had some kind of regiment. But yeah, I mean, it was impressive what he actually does to prepare. And uh, like he said, he doesn't eat carbs. Like he has no carbs in the house. He doesn't eat carbs during the week. Like the weekends are more laid back, but impressive discipline to do that because there's no chance that I'm going a whole week without carbs. That just means he's absolutely craving the buns, which is probably the only way you can eat those buns that are dunked in water. Like that, that makes me want to puke when they, when they dunk the buns in water and you know, they're just swallowing soggy buns. Oh God. It yeah. makes my stomach turn. All right. So who do we think of on the Ole Miss roster? Okay. If Jaws jumps in, there's no shot. Like nobody on the Ole Miss roster has a chance, but who do we think is the best hot dog eater on the Ole Miss roster? So the early favorite per some players uh, during media availability this week, they said Diego Pounds, the offensive tackle from North Carolina. Aptly um, named. Y yeah, right. Uh, they said that they think that he is probably the favorite. Um, I don't know. I mean, I could see I could see somebody like a Ulysses Bentley mm -hmm. being, being being able to put down some groceries. Uh Probably still got a high metabolism. Can probably you know some adrenaline kicks in. Maybe he he throws them down. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like the lineman's kind of like cliche to say that it, it's not always the huge guy. Like the the most I've ever seen a person eat in my presence was was Brock Heward, who's a former quarterback. <laughs> but he's yeah. one of those you know six five, just you know two hundred twenty pound like high motor, high metabolism. Like it's those guys, the hollow leg guys. Like I, there's probably an edge guy. There's probably a, a tight end. I like has priest corn. What, what do we think? Priest corn can put down some dogs. You know, probably, um, you know, he probably has to eat a lot of leftovers as, as a father. Um, he's probably having to clean some plates <laughs> off. Um, you know, at the end of I the love night. you say have to. Trust me, it's voluntary. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, he doesn't have to. Uh, you, you know, we, we compost here in this house, so we do have a, a place to put it. But if it's something that I made and I know it's good and my kids don't eat it all, I'm, I'm going to finish a plate. Oh, you've left half your fries and three chicken fingers. What are we doing here? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that, that is true. All right, let, let's, let's talk about non-hot dog versions <laughs> of competitions. This is the most anticipated year of Ole Miss football, maybe ever. So 
I think I, I do appreciate this. They're like they're they're gonna make sure nobody gets hurt. But do you think they're gonna give folks a taste of maybe what Juice Wells can do, or maybe what the Jackson Dart Trey Harris combination looks like right now? I think you're probably gonna see more of Trey Harris than Juice Wells. I, I've seen him in recent weeks. Juice has been in a boot, um, so I don't think they're gonna rush him back, especially not for this. Kiffin's gonna be smart about it because uh, he's a he's a. They're planning on him being a large part of the offense, right? So I'd imagine they're going to put him on the shelf for this and he'll just be out there in street clothes. But, yeah, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of – you already mentioned Priest Corn, just another year in the offense. Uh, this is a big draft year for him. Um, yeah, the Trey Harris combination, that's been big on social media. Him and Trey Amos going back and forth. Uh, the transfer corner from Alabama – you know, they've been doing the iron sharpens iron, you know, deal on Twitter and Instagram. So, yeah, Trey Harris, by all accounts, has had a great spring and looks to have gained a bit of a step. He looks a little bit quicker and faster. Um, the big thing, Andy, is talking with people that have been to practice. They said this is the biggest offensive line they've ever seen. Um, I had a former player tell me everyone looks like Laramie Tunsil. Um and then they're saying Walter Nolan and Prince Liam Ellen are still blowing stuff up in practice. So that's another iron sharpens iron right there, right? In the trenches. Go to fanduel.com slash staples. $5 bet gets you $150 in bonus bets for new customers. If you sign up at fanduel.com slash staples, there's a lot going on. You, you obviously got the, the NBA play in tournament, you got the Masters, but right now, They've just put these out there. Odds for your team to make the college football playoff. And I, I thought these were really interesting. And like Ohio State is a prohibitive favorite to make the playoff. Like they are minus 500 to make the playoff. But like Miami, who we'll be talking about at length today, plus 250 to make the college football playoff. And as I looked at that, and I was like, okay, what are the other ACC contenders? Well, you got Louisville at plus 360. You got Florida State at plus 164 and Clemson at plus 172. Like, it's interesting when you think about it because it's such a new concept with the 12-team playoff. But somebody from the ACC has got to win the ACC and make the playoff. So that's a very interesting race right there. The Big 12, kind of the same thing. You know, they got Arizona. They got Utah in there. They got K-State. Like, this is going to be a fascinating year. K-State plus 290 to make the college football playoff. So, lots going on at FanDuel. Sign up now. FanDuel.com slash Staples. Bet $5. Get $150 in bonus bets for new customers. That is FanDuel.com slash staples you walk me into my next question because they brought back a lot of offensive linemen from last year but also brought in guys from the transfer portal who had played at their previous stop significant snaps and could be very competitive so it feels like they are talking about a group where they'll be comfortable playing six seven eight guys on the offensive line i think so i mean I think I had subscribers wanting me to answer, you know, hey, who do you think the starting five is? And you know, I don't know. Um, I'm just taking a guess. But, yeah, I mean, Julius Buello and, and Nate Calipo from Washington, I, I mean, they're on the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. They're going to be heavy in the mix. Um, you also bring in Diego Pounds, we already talked about, starting tackle from North Carolina, protected Drake May. And then um, a, a veteran in Jerquan Scott from Southern Miss. And you're adding those guys to a group that help Quinshawn Juckins and Ulysses Bentley and Jackson Dart have success on the ground and then help Dart have his best season yet. So um, as fast as, as Ole Miss can go at times with tempo, um, you know, that's a big thing to have, right, is, you know, running backs rotate in a lot. Receivers rotate in. They want to keep guys fresh. But – you can keep an offensive line fresh. I mean, I don't know if we'll see, you know, line changes like in hockey, but I mean, I think that that's a great problem to have where you're trying to find five guys to pick. 
Yeah, you saw it with Tennessee a couple years ago where they were moving exceptionally fast and had guys they trusted. And so they would they would pop them in and out of there, you know, at, at various times. And it it did keep them fresher. You you mentioned Walter Nolan and, and Princely Manmiel, and Nolan came from Texas AM. He's a D tackle. Princely's an edge guy, came from Florida. And I, that's the part that has fascinated me about Ole Miss this spring or this offseason, because we've always said really hard to get better in the trenches through the transfer portal. We just talked about what they did on the offensive line. This seems like it's going to be a lot better defensive line too. I think so. And you have the, the, the cachet of, of Nolan and, and Umami Ellen, but Jared Ivy's back. JJ Pegues is back. I saw a video of Xavier Harris at practice the other day. He, the dude's a Coke machine and he looked like he was moving like a linebacker. Um, Randall Joyner, the defensive line coach, is every time I talk to him, he's so fired up, so excited about the potential of what the group can be. Um, and I mean, just I think it's going to free up Pete Golding and that staff to really be aggressive because of the talent that was brought in in the secondary, too. And then, oh, by the way, you get somebody like Pooh Paul at linebacker, you've got TJ Dudley for a full season, and Kari Coleman's back, and then you've got Suntreen Perkins, who can just move around everywhere. The truly the sky's the limit. And I mean, Andy, plus, I mean, the odds for Ole Miss to make the playoff. I, I mean, I thought it was a typo when I looked at it the other day on FanDuel. I mean, it's at minus 122. Mm -hmm. Any time have you told if you told an Ole Miss fan that five years ago that that's what the odds would be in 2024, they'd probably slap you or just laugh and walk away. <laughs> Listen, they got the roster, they got the schedule. Like it's all it's all lining up. As long as yeah. nobody chokes on a hot dog, which you know, <laughs> Joey will be there to coach him through it. So I, I'm 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 confident they'll be okay there. All right. I have to ask this though, because we're dealing with with Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. Transfer portal opens on on Monday. It does. Do they go shopping again? Do they do you think do you think they're done adding to this roster? No, I think they're going to. Um, it was a couple weeks ago. Time is a flat circle, as you know. Uh, <laughs> Henry Parrish announced he would be entering the portal. He was at Ole Miss. Then he went to Miami with Kevin Smith. Now Kevin Smith is back at Ole Miss. Parrish entered the portal. It is expected, barring something crazy happening, uh, he will be back at, at Ole Miss for the 2024 season. Uh, and then I think they're probably going to try to add a, at least another running back. Um, Logan Diggs, we, we talk about the knee injury a lot. I think if Kiffin, if you asked him and he honestly answered, he would say that the ideal situation would be to add more running backs to give Diggs that, that you know, ease his rehab a little bit where he's not rushed to get back. He's not needed immediately this season. Um, the expectation is that he will be back late September, October, but yeah, I think they're going to try to add some running backs and then probably an edge if it's the right fit that that's big for Ole Miss, not just on the field, but in the locker room, like the pro mindset, the culture buying into what Ole Miss is doing. That's, that's as big as, as, as are you talented enough to play in the sec? It's probably more important. Um, but yeah, Kiffin's Kiffin's gonna, gonna add at least a couple more. Never stops. Never stops. Well, I know this is not as interesting as talking to Joey Chestnut, but I really appreciate it, Zach, and and thank you, and en enjoy that spring game. Yeah, man, as always. Appreciate it. Do you? Th thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.